Okay, let's honor punctuality. Uh, um, so we have James Daly today. Although James does not need introduction in this community, I will do. James started this project in 2002 while looking for commercially available solutions for Microsoft, microfinance operations. The project eventually contributed a key part of the code to the Apache Foundation, what is known as FINRACT. We are talking about of MIFOS, the MIFOS initiative and the MIFOS X product. He's on the FINRACT PMC and frequently contributes requirements and system designs. He consults on payments and banking systems and he's our grandfather. <laughs> so every, everything started with you, James. So I'm here to, to watch the state of the project and the state of the industry, uh, what is here from us and what we're going to see on the next three days. James is going to give us a teaser of the presentations that have been, are going to happen. So without further ado, James Daly. Great. Thank you, Javier. Really appreciate that and, and all your work that you've done to put this uh, track together at ApacheCon. Uh, this is our second um, virtual. Uh, prior to this, uh, Finerac was uh, at the in-person, um, although I never did make it to any of those in-person sessions. Um, unfortunately, they were always in a part of the world I couldn't get to at the time. Um, so, Today, I want you to think about these three areas of questions as we go through the week, the three days. Um, what direction for Fenerac? Is there something we can learn from what we're hearing um, in our track and other tracks that could help move the project in a new way? Um, who can we collaborate with? Are there other open source projects we want to you know, work with? Are there plugins we want to think about? Is there scalability we need to think about? Are there other approaches to community development and outreach that we should consider? Um, is there a new business direction? Is there a different opportunity that maybe, you know, with our heads down too much, we haven't seen? Um, is, there, is there places where Finerac could be better applied and, and useful to the world? So these are some questions to keep in mind. And uh, as we go through these, I think we can sort of break up the talks um, in a few different uh, areas. One is these are proposals and ideas for improving Finerac. So these are uh, these are uh, things that will relate to you know making more of a microservices approach, or as we've recently heard, uh, the AI expansion or the 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 plugins or the additional pieces of functionality that could be built next to Finerac or on top of Finerac. Uh, we'll be hearing more about payments and how those integrate with Finerac and projects along, along those lines. We'll be hearing about commercial players using Finerac in, in production, in banking, in new fintechs, in credit unions, uh, and then there's another set of things that we'll be hearing about, which is uh, what's next? We had an earlier morning session about uh, distributed finance, uh, which you know uses different technologies, but some of the same concepts of um, accounts and lending and uh, being able to uh, do this in a low cost way. So things that align with us at a values level. There's going to be a session uh, about um, digital public goods and G2P. Uh, there'll be uh, talks about devices and central bank digital currencies. So the list, of course, is on the site, but here it is. Um, I'll be posting this to this to the Finerac um, wiki, so you can see this uh, if you haven't, and. Uh, you know, I think as we go through this, you know, we'll have things like, um, you know, the folks at uh, at Move are here. We have folks from 
uh, investment community looking at open source and fintechs. And we'll be listening to folks talk about uh, the power of communities. So there's a great set of of uh, things going on this week. I hope everybody gets a chance to look at them, participate, ask questions. That's the ethic. Participate, be part of the community. So here are some key themes that I wanted to uh, pick up on for open source and financial services. Now, we've been saying this, or at least I've been saying this for a long time, that the commoditization of core processing um in this space is inevitable that is that we're going to move from a world of bespoke banking systems to a world of commoditization of those core processing and that the the value chain will 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 shift so that differentiation happens on top of the commodity not at the level of you know creating an account and reading from a customer record these are all things that banks have to do. There's a lot of, I think, uh, inefficiency in banking systems in how they do these same things over and over and over again. Uh, and there is a need to commoditize. So for a long time, we've been saying, trust us. And what I think is interesting is that we have seen a huge explosion in, in this space. So we have new cloud providers essentially starting to provide accounts as a service. And we have new players providing payments as a service. And so there's this, uh, there's this issue of open source and cloud and whether the two strategies work together. But as I see it, they work well together as long as the cloud providers themselves um, aren't, uh, aren't, you know, the only ones in the driver's seat. So should the financial services migrate to a different part of the value chain? Yes, they should. They, we need to talk about that. The developer communities do matter. Uh, we have seen huge dividends, um, for the economy in how open source powers uh, new innovation uh, further up the value chain. And, and this process, uh, which Apache has had a huge part of, uh, is, is ongoing and continues uh, to be important for us. Uh, and so we, we need to continue to recognize that. Payments and accounts are maybe not quite as separate. So, uh, you know, I think in banking and payments, we, we split things apart and we we think about these as separate uh, constructs but in a lot of ways uh, if you if you have an identity then you can have an account associated with that and then all of the transactions on your account might be something that uh, all gets you know rolled up into one but what am I talking about there there are ways of thinking about, uh, you know, ledgers that are different now than, than we've thought about ledgers in the past, where we have distributed um, ledgers, where we have accounts that uh, transact. Uh, we are blending these concepts now. Uh, there are, of course, software as a service models, payment as a service models, and embedding of financial services into other digital platforms in a more native way. So I think there's a whole set of things around rewriting the rules of financial services with new technologies. And these are, these are themes that I see powered by open source. So open source is really an accelerator for, you know, uh, cloud-based services. It's an accelerator for commoditization and data and the ability for a lot of different institutions and organizations to get access. Let's pause for a second and ask ourselves, what is FINERAC? Who is FINERAC? Um, so there's really three components. One is the software, and uh, we'll talk about that, of course. The other part that's vital is the process of development. And by this, I mean the community. 
And it's, it's sort of an axiom in the Apache way that community over code. So we think of the process of development as making it possible for participants to have a say and for the meritocracy to develop. And then of course, the part that I've been talking about is the people, so you. You are Finarac, and this is why uh, we have this conference to emphasize this point over and over again. I'd like to restate our you know, vision a bit here. We, we hope to create long-term value by driving toward a commoditization of the underpinnings of one of the core activities in society. You know, so that is, you know, we can call it banking or payments, but it's really, it's the exchange of value. It's the store of value and it's lending. The result of this is more people getting access to financial service globally and from their locally, insti locally owned institutions. So we have a vision that is a little different perhaps than some of the global players. So how are we doing? Well, we have uh, a, a team of 41 committers. 19 members of the PMC. And really there's huge congratulations goes out to all the committers uh, and those involved in FINERAC 1.5.0 uh, released in May. Um, thanks especially to Alex and Petri who helped shepherd this through. But there were a lot of contribu contributions. Um, I'll mention that CN is still in the process of design and development after several years. It's still going with a few people starting again to look at how we can build out a minimum viable product to take it through the full release pro process. If you want to know more, please, the reports are found at the wiki. I wanna emphasize that community is our lifeblood and we welcomed five uh, Google Summer of Code uh, participants, but more importantly, we built a additional community here by having a huge number of um, a huge number of of mentors involved in this. So the the men the mentors are a key part of this. Now these folks worked on front end, and they worked on AI, and they worked on uh, some backlog of of issues, um, and I. I there's a blog entry at uh, Mifos that covers this, um, but uh, we again thank them for their work and especially to the mentors who continue to help build our our community. It, this is a screenshot of commits over the past year in the Finarac. Um, you can see we had a release. Uh, I believe it was last January. We had something. And then we had uh, the the one that I just mentioned in uh, in June. So uh, this has been uh, good progress on code, but again, code is really secondary to making sure we have the people involved to to move things forward. Uh, there's been some debate on the list recently, and so I want to um, just highlight a few things that. Uh, the Apache way is about, you know, creating high quality code. Um, it's about building community. It's about providing mentorship to new participants. Um, but people uh, come to the project, you know, as themselves. You're not here as your company or representing your company or, or your narrow interests. You're here to contribute good code and, and uh, be recognized for that and, and move to committer status and, and other uh, roles on the project. Uh, it's if it, if it didn't happen on list, it didn't happen. So this is important that while we can send people to Discord and to Slack channels, et cetera, et cetera, for discussions, those are fine, and we have to sort of accept that that that's the norm these days because listservs are, you know, frankly quite old. Um, but it, the list is really where we have our record. It's where we have our our public discussions. It's vital that we bring things back to list. If it didn't happen on the list, it, it didn't happen. Um, so you need to explain what uh, discussions you're having, and bring it back onto the list. It's super important that we do that. Um, let's stay together by being good together. And so this is the way that I would sort of 
restate this idea of being civil and um, and working together and and creating a technically uh, robust discussion. Uh, these are all values, and you can look at more information on the Apache Way and on Project Independence. Now, just as a historical fact, um, Mifos contributed the code, and Mifos has had a, a strong uh, set of values around standards, community, collaboration, and any all of these open elements of our of our approach. So when the Mifos community contributed the code to Apache, I think we were already well aligned with Apache. So I just observed that that there is a strong alignment and uh, and Mifos continues to do the software that sits on top of or next to Fenerac. Fenerac is its own thing. Fenerac is the code that Mifos has contributed, but it's also the community at Apache. So while we have this as our DNA, Mifos is not uh, Fenerac. Uh, just to emphasize this point, here's from the Mifos initiative, the three generations that we've done. The first generation aimed really at microfinance, the second generation, which was called Mifos X, uh, aimed at, uh, at the financial inclusion space, and then this code, Mifos X, got contributed after many changes um, in order to get it accepted into the Apache uh, process. Generation three is our Fenerac CN, but it is not yet released, as I already mentioned. So where are we today? We're on version 1.5 of Fenerac, as I already mentioned. Mifos has a project off to the side called Payments uh, Hub or uh, Orchestration. There are some front ends for the staff UI. Um, so we have a recent release, July 1st, from the MIFOS perspective uh, in the front ends. And then there's some additional pieces being developed in credit scoring and AI, as you just heard. The core thing is Fenerac. The core thing that we're talking about today and at this conference is, is Fenerac. But we have to keep in mind that there are a lot of other projects out there. So what other projects might we want to follow? So MOVE, which we'll hear about later on in this uh, FinTech uh, track, has built ACH libraries as a starting point, and they're embedding payments in a variety of different places. It's a super interesting approach, really engaging the developer community. Finos, uh, yes, this will be recorded for later. Finos is a FinTech open source foundation, and the banking, um, the banking sector uh, sort of looking at how to establish standards around certain workflows, et cetera. They have some interesting apps, look them up. Uh, they're, I believe, also associated now with, um, with the Linux Foundation. Mojaloop is a project that I've had some uh, small part on. Uh, the Mojaloop is a payment switch developed with funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that connects bank accounts and mobile wallets. Hyperledger, uh, of course, is a really uh, large project, enterprise-grade blockchain. This includes for identity. There's just a whole bunch of things that Hyperledger is doing under its own sort of umbrella. And then I, I call out Stellar because I think they're doing some interesting things. It's one that I like to track. Um, but I also encourage you to pick your favorite. Lift your eyes up and and find things that interest you and in identity accounts, pay, payments, scalability. I think is a big deal for us. Um, artificial intelligence and data management, data lakes, those kinds of things. So there are lots of things you can work on. Lots of things that would help us move our project forward. Um, and uh, there's some interesting things there. Okay, uh, want to share some of the results of the survey that I conducted uh, in August. Maybe not the best time to conduct a survey, but that's what we had. So it was live for about uh, nine days and the results are posted on the wiki, but I wanted to go through a few things. So overwhelmingly, we had a very positive view of the project. And 
we remain a fairly software developer centric uh, organization. We've had a few more people come in from the business and solutions architect world than we had two years ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, we also have a strong core set of people who have remained with the project for five years or more, which is terrific. The evolution of the project. So I want to contrast two things. Um, so when we asked in 2019 versus 2021, the thing that I would call out is that one of the responses we're getting now, which we did not have two years ago, was that uh, people are coming to Fenerac because it's required for their job or it's they're learning about it from their workplace. Previously, it was like I heard about it from a friend. So this is actually a very interesting um, uh, evolution of the project. Forking of Fenerac is a major uh, issue for this project uh, in that we we have a lot of contributions that I think are sitting out there that could come back into the project. And we really encourage people to adopt a upstream first strategy. Uh, interestingly, 22% of respondents saying they use Fenerac alone or in tandem with Fenerac 1.x. So oh, even though Fenerac alone, if Fenerac CN has not been released, it is <laughs> being used. Um, and I am curious to see if some of those contributions can also come back because that would really get Fenerac CN to a, a release point um, that we can all be happy about. Uh, despite what I just said, 50% of the people want to help with both of these projects, despite only 42% knowing what the changes are really about. Um, and so yay community. This really shows that there is a, uh, a strong desire to pitch in and, and help. Yay us. Uh, I also wanted to mention some things about uh, there, is a, there is a set of people who are reading the listserv, a set of people who are uh, and then and there seems to be a small, uh, dedicated few making most of the contributions. I don't think this is abnormal in any project, and I think it shows, you know, some good strength. Uh, I would hope that we can have even more people participating in reviewing code, um, and in you know helping to design features. Seems like we could have some help, even if you aren't contributing code. There are other things you can do. Uh, I thought this was interesting as well. There's a lot of fintechs here, digital lenders or wallet providers. These fintech players might actually be providing software solutions to microfinance or to others, but uh, it's an interesting evolution that that is now a dominant thing and a very small slice is now the traditional microfinance or uh, traditional bank setup sort of directly. And this, I think, is a good um, a good trend. A lot of people are actively using or deploying, which is different than previously. And so this is actually a very good thing as well. We have almost 60% of our uh, implementations aimed at Africa. And the Americas, I'm going to assume, that's mostly in uh, Latin America and outside of North America, although there might be a few here that I've heard about, uh, there are, people were able to answer, you know, multiple on these. So these don't add up to 100%. So we have a huge footprint in the global South, as you might expect. Um, and it is, it is a very different picture than I think other Apache projects. What would make it easier for you to contribute? Yeah, uh, <laughs> more time available, I think, takes the cake. Uh, that, of course, is everybody's problem. But I, I do think that the ease of deployment and the ability to pay folks to do some development is something that structurally we should try to figure out. Uh, we need to connect people to paid work. We need to have contributors being able to contribute uh, through you know, the ease of deployment, ease of setting things up. Um, so I, these are some interesting observations. 
And then here we are compared against the Apache Way um, features. So collaborative software development, commercially friendly license, et cetera, consistent high quality. And on this one, I would say that, you know, the only place where we even had a bit of a bad mark on this is uh, the quality of the software uh, was sort of called out by a few people as not up to snuff. Um, but the rest of these things were quite positive. And so I, I really take this as a, as a good for our uh, community. So again, we'll come back to, to these principles that um, kind of relate to some things I've said earlier. It's important that we we put efforts into Finarac, uh, and that if you're going to build things, build them on top of or connected to Finarac. Don't please don't fork. That's that's always a conversation, but in, we might need to spend more time thinking about the architecture. If people are forking, it might be because it's too difficult um, in some way. But if we've done everything we can, then it, it really is up to the community to to bring back their contributions. Follow the best practices around open source, uh, meaning uh, the community, meaning uh, documentation, meaning uh, you know being transparent, um, and then abide by the Apache norms, which I already mentioned. Some of those things. All right. Again, we're going through this week with some interesting. Uh, conversations. We'll have birds of feather later today. Um, we have a lot of different folks coming to talk. And so what direction for Finarac? How can we collaborate? And is there a new opportunity that should be applied? Thank you. And I'm happy to take a few questions. Which you will have to do in the chat or the Q&A if you want to ask a question. <laughs> and hey Javier, um, is there a way for you to set up a uh, a poll? Hello. Hello, uh, Javier. I think uh, no, not in this event. OK. No, I can see. So I, I did have one question, and, and you mentioned that um, about I was drinking mate while I was listening to you, <laughs> of course. Uh, what, what, where can we see uh, Finerac CN? implementations live uh, it's you, you mentioned that there are some uh, it would be interesting to to hear about them uh so i, I feel like um I, I should have the folks that are doing those implementations speak um to them to to it themselves but uh i believe victor would be happy to explain how he's used finarac uh, CN as a component of an overall architecture. And I know Ishtvan uh, will probably be on later at Birds of a Feather, and he can talk about how he was able to, you know, make some changes to it and use it in production for a sort of digital channel piece as well. The It's good enough starter dough that folks have taken it and built minimum viable products on top of it. And so the strategy that we should consider, which is actually one of the talks, uh, will be around, you know, we create, we could simply, so Finarexian was stands for cloud native um, and cloud native also implied in this case, a microservices approach. But when you talk about microservices, there's always a discussion of what is the smallest viable or necessary microservice. And in one of the talks, which I think, not sure if that's today or tomorrow, there's a discussion about making Finarac itself, Finarac 1.x, 
a microservice and what that looks like. And so if you take that approach versus splitting up Finarak into microservices itself, you're basically arguing that the microservice should be smaller than, or should be larger than, than what we designed in Finarak CN. Uh, th this I think is a good debate to have. Uh, so, so I've answered your question. I think I've also <laughs> gone in a different direction there. Yeah, sorry. We have Edward, Ed's question and I will leave you with that question. Uh, right, and so actually Ed uh, mentioned that Cardano is gonna mention how they're using Finarak CN um, as part of their stack uh, and for their Stokevel, which is a savings, um, savings led kind of uh, approach. Uh, so Finarak CN is being used there um, already. Uh, okay, how has the evolution of the community met or fulfilled my original expectations for the project when you started in? So, uh, I, I think it's, it, you know, I think it's important to dream big and to, and to articulate the biggest possible future. I had a, I had a notion that the underpinnings of the financial system were totally out of step with where the global population was. Okay, I'm, I'm, I was working in a Grameen organization and you know what the statistics were telling us is that a billion people were well served by financial institutions and everybody else was not. And so when you have that kind of situation, fundamentally, <laughs> there's something very wrong. Uh, and so I thought, look, open source could actually twin, you know, could be paired with this uh, as a solution because it relies on the power of community. And what we really needed to do was to redesign the financial system systems payments and accounting and lending and savings from the from the bottom up. And I felt that the long-term trend would be toward that. The community, I think, has surprised me. The Although I had this notion that we needed to get some developers together, I didn't really understand what it took to bring together people um, to, to encourage a vibrant discussion uh and there's a you know there's a lot of learnings there uh and it's still an ongoing thing so i think the trajectory is is still where i hope it to go where, where i hope it's going to go um is to be a key part of the conversation around open source for financial inclusion for the broadest possible access to financial services the democratization of financial services. I think that's a phrase that that is rattling around in my head still. Um, and I think we've done pretty well. Um, are there any other questions? So uh, we could um, simply wrap this up early. Uh, I'll leave this uh, thing up here. Uh, folks can see that if they if they have some additional questions about what's happening. Uh, Okay, yes, thank you, James.
Yep. I believe the, the next one, it's at, uh, it's in 40 minutes, if I'm wrong, if I'm not mistaken. Um, How many minutes? 40. It's uh, it's 510 UTC. Okay. It's, um, yeah, 2 p.m. my time. I know <laughs> it's, it, it is late. It is early for you, but uh, it's Tuesday 510 UTC expanding finite capabilities, a practical example from Frank and Guyaha. Uh, so, oh, yeah, there. there's a bit of a, yeah, there's a bit of a gap on our schedule there. I see that now. Yes, there's a gap on the schedule. All right. Time to go get some breakfast or lunch or something. Yes. All right, everybody. Have a good have a good day. We'll see you back at Birds of a Feather, I hope. Oh yeah. See you there. Bye everybody. Bye. One second. Oh. Still here. One second. Yeah. Edward, I, I, there's a question from Rashid. Is Finirac CN the future of the Finirac project or is this just a branch of its use case? I leave you here. <laughs> so, uh, good question, Rashid. And the community needs to answer this question. So, at one point in time, Finarac was conceptualized as a better approach because it was going to be cloud native, it was going to be microservices, uh, and it has, uh, in theory, a faster developer, um, like once you're familiar with it, a faster developer um, time to market. So. Uh, putting components together and extending them and not having a lot of um, obscure dependencies. So it was an attempt to break the domain down into things like accounts, customers, uh, products, and portfolio, accounting, and to have these things interact um, through APIs with some orchestration, holding them together. Um, so the community needs to answer the question, is it the future? I believe now that Fenerac 1.x is, you know, such a mature and um, well used project and enough people know it that it continues to have a, a long life ahead of it. Um, I do also think that Finarac needs to evolve into something more highly scalable. We need to get to you know, the kinds of transaction volumes that digital banks need to do um, and embedded um, finance needs to do. So scalability, comes with sort of change some comes with changes from to the architecture uh and we also need to consider this you know the you know overloading the uh the software with too much functionality in a monolithic approach so there are some problems with you know long term that i could see but I'm not sure that means we need to do Finarex CN. I am, I am, I think actually, I think actually that what we need to have is a frank conversation about whether the observations from Finarex CN can come back in, or maybe Finarex 1.x can become a microservice that fits within Finarex CN, or uh, that we have two separate projects that have their own separate sort of target markets. Uh, so I think there are ways to combine these two efforts. I think there are ways to learn from one to the other. Um, I'm not sure which one ends up being the one that gobbles the other, or if that's the right way to think about it, or, or whether we just keep evolving both and then they converge. 
in some way. Um, so that's a long-winded answer. <laughs> and Ed says that there's going to be a session about, to working up on, on this problem. Yes, there is. That is on um, Wednesday at 1800 at UTC, modularizing Finarac. All right. Well, I was about to <laughs> I was about to wrap up if there aren't any other questions. Okay. That feels good. Thank you all. I appreciate uh you being here and I again look forward to meeting everybody after the last session. There's a birds of a feather session, which will be available in sessions. And uh, we will all uh, meet there uh, with the appropriate beverage in hand, whatever that happens to be where you are. All right. Thank you all. Bye now.